Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather coming at you with another video. In today's update, we're going to be talking about the overall pattern for the next two weeks to take you through the end of February. So before I do get started, if you do like weather related content, please subscribe to my channel as I will upload about five videos a week to keep you updated. All right, so let's get started. So let's start off with the overall uh, teleconnections. This is pretty much the driving force of our weather. This is what we're looking at here is the NAO, which is the North Atlantic Oscillation, as well as the EPO, the Eastern Pacific Oscillation. And what we're looking at is basically a chart from February 9th through the first couple days of March. Now, as you can see, the NAO has been predominantly positive and it's been fairly positive all winter actually, and it continues positive and we can't get those sustained cold snaps. We get them, we get them for a couple days. You can see the the EPO, the Eastern Pacific Oscillation, dipped negative, and we had some Arctic air intrude into the United States. And now this is retreating back north northward. But basically, as, as the NAO goes back more positive, we can't get these in sync, more or less. Uh, they dip slightly negative, but we can't get these basically in sync. So these cold snaps only last for several days. We get another one, looks like about, you know, around the 20th, you know, 19th, 20th of the month, lasts for a couple of days, and then it re retreats back northward, and the NAO re retreats back northward. But this is a blend of all the models, all right? So, but finally, it looks like by the end of the month, we actually kind of get these more in sync. We actually get this one to go negative, or slightly, you know, neutral to negative. This would allow more blocking up north, so you basically get that jet stream to dip and allow that cold air to funnel but it would actually slow down the pattern too so it would be more sustainable and at the same time the epo would also go negative to neutral so this is a sign that possibly by the end of the month and in beginning and in going into march potentially we could actually get some more sustainable cold into the pattern all right so let's take a look at the uh, the Southern Oscillation Index. Now, this is an index I follow religiously. Uh, if you've been following me for the last uh, couple months now, we talked about this going pretty much elevated back in December, and we called the uh, Madoki El Nino Foreman would allow that Southern uh, Pacific Jet to uh, activate and funnel in that more precipitation in the South and Southeast. And man, it's come in with a vengeance. And at times you can see, and now what you're looking at is, this is kind of a 10 day lagging indicator. So as you can see, this is with double digit negative back in the first and the 12th. So if you add 10 days, it's pretty much a 10 day lagging indicator that puts it about the 11th or the 12th. And we had all that rain in the South and Southeast, right? We, it showed sign of relaxing, but now we're actually seeing that going double digit negative again. So it basically keeps the Pacific jet alive and funnels in more moisture into the South and Southeast. And that's what's going to come. We've got more wet <laughs> for the South and Southeast. If you look at uh, the latest, uh, the climate prediction center, what they're actually forecasting. Now this is uh, the latest map from the 20th, 20 tw to the 24th. We saw that little bit of dip in the EPA, right? So that's going to allow the activated Pacific jet to funnel in cooler air down south. It shows well, uh, below normal temperatures down into the south and southeast. Actually, the ridge kind of relaxes a little bit, um, but then you have that uh, above average temperatures to the north. We've got elevated precipitation down south from the 20th to the 24th. If we extend the view, it has that northwest flow again being activated, allowing more cold air to funnel into the northwest and hit a lot of the same areas that's been hit for predominantly most of February, and the Northeast uh, warms back up again. And we have uh, elevated precipitation going into uh, the Southern states with that elevated SOI index. All right, so let's walk you through some of these anomalies. Uh, this is the anomaly from this morning, and we saw the end of this Arctic intrusion. We had some really cold temperatures it hit for the last couple days in minnesota i think the coldest was 39 below zero and that was the same day florida hit 90 so you almost had a 130 degree swing there that was pretty incredible
but now that funneled into the northeast. So I know Chicago, O'Hare hit two below. Now this morning, Caribou, Maine hit 24 below. That was her coldest in five years since 2015. I think Bur Burlington, Vermont was 10 below. I think New York hit 14. So pretty good cold snap for you guys. Actually, probably the coldest of the season. And now this is going to kind of relax. This puts you through the 17th. And that southeast ridge amplifies again, punneling in you know, 10 to 15 degrees above average air temperatures for the south and southeast. But we have another uh, cold snap coming, out, coming your way for, from the northwest. If we walk you through the 20th of the month, this kind of a shows that colder air funneling in from the northwest, pretty much predominantly over the central part of the U.S., where that cold pattern showed down south from the 20th to the 24th. And these are pretty much, you know, 10 to 15 degrees uh, below average. These are actually Celsius uh, temperatures. And then if we expand the view, this is the 24th, where it kind of really sags south, and this is really kind of maxes out over Texas. So this southern jet really amplifies now when we could actually have some snow breaking out in west texas so we're, we're going to have to watch this later on this week where how much cold air is able to get a funnel in uh with these uh with these cooler cooler temperatures and this you know the pre precipitation down south uh into the south and southeast so we'll have some opportunities there uh they're subtle but it's not it's not great but there, we will have some opportunities for some snow and pr particularly uh, this area. So if we expand the view, it kind of pulses back up again, right? So we have the, by the 25th of the month, we have well above average temperatures uh, for the Northeast. And then we have another Northwest flow again from, from the Northwest funnel in from uh, Oregon, Washington, below average temperatures hitting Nevada, Utah, into, into Arizona and going into New Mexico. This will penetrate uh, the south if we expand the view down into the 27th of the month. It kind of shows that what well, now we have those again below average temperatures into uh, south into the south into Texas, and we have well above average temperatures where that Climate Prediction Center was predicting av above average temperatures for you guys in the northeast, a good 10 to 15 degrees above average, and this this is the 27th of the month now. So. But if we expand the view, now this is the first, right? So this is where the, the NAO and the EPO was kind of showing. Now, this is, of course, two weeks out now, but it's kind of showing that they both actually go negative at the same time. And you can kind of see maybe pretty much the whole entire United States is a, a below average uh, now. And we'll just have to see if we have a momentum in this pattern where we can get some of this cold air, you know, locking up for longer periods of time rather than uh, a couple days. So that'll kind of give you an idea as far as uh, temperatures, but this kind of gives you an idea as far as precipitation, where a lot of the areas that you have seen above average precipitation are gonna get even more rain for the next two weeks. We got the Northwest flow alive, bringing more snow into Colorado. They're gonna be, be getting more snow into Denver. And I think they got 45 inches now. So, and, they're, and then of course, March is their snowiest month of the season so they've got more snow on the way for them and then the pacific jet is going to remain alive dumping in dumping uh, with the southern oscillation index being elevated uh, with above average precipitation for louisiana alabama mississippi georgia into the carolinas and then we potentially have this remains uh, below average but we could start getting above average. This is actually implying the last couple of days for you guys in the Northeast, maybe some colder air mixing in with uh, some, some precip precipitation to begin at that time frame. So we'll just have to see how all that plays out towards the end of the month. But that'll kind of give you an idea of what the next two weeks holds for you guys uh, for pretty much the entire United States. So I appreciate you guys watching and definitely uh, be sure to share with your friends on uh, social media uh, about my channel and please, uh, uh, subscribe if you do love weather related content and definitely catch my next video where I protect you before and after the storm.